Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be seeing how we can actually do load testing into our web API. We're going to be seeing how we can configure the tool in order for us to run different types of tests, latencies, number of requests coming in, etc, etc. If you'd like to learn more about .NET, AWS or Azure, please make sure you like and subscribe. It will really help the channel. Now, let's jump into it. So what I currently have here is I have a very simple application which we calculated previously, which basically gives us the capability of doing some CRUD operation on a database. So as we can see here, when I do a GET request, I get my information back. I can do the full CRUD operation. And if I go back to my source code, we can see the application is pretty straightforward, where we have basically a couple of controllers that allow us to do the CRUD operation, as well as I have a data service class library, as well as an entities class library. And in this case, I'm utilizing SQLite database to store all of my information. The implementation is pretty straightforward and doesn't really have a lot of complexity in it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing our drivers controllers, and we're going to be seeing how we can actually implement some performance tests against it. And the tool that we're going to be using, it's going to be JMeter. So JMeter is an open source application. Let me zoom in a bit. So it's an open source application and it allows us to actually um, do functional tests as well as measure performance on our way. It was basically first designed for web application, but then it has been expanded. And here we can see that this is some of the features that they actually provide. And we can see here load testing for web using HTTP and HTTPS for different languages. We can do so web FTP databases etc etc for the sake of this video we're only interested in uh, actually implementing performance for web so what i did so far is i have downloaded jmeter and if you need to download it all you need to do is just go to the download releases here and you can actually download whatever based on whatever version that you have or whatever operating system that you're using pretty straightforward the download and the installation process so now that it has been downloaded let me open it up so once you install it and download it you, this is the UI that you're going to be seeing out of the box. So as soon as you open JMeter after the installation, this is the UI that you're going to be seeing. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting by adding our own test plan. And this test plan will allow us to configure what types of tests that we want to actually implement against our web API. So on the left hand side, where I have test plan here, I'm going to click, I'm going to right click, click on add, click on threads and use and select thread group. And within this thread group i'm gonna give it a name i'm gonna say load test for example and within this here what i want to do is i want to specify the number of threads so what i want to do is i want to try to mimic the numbers of users who are using my application so let's say i want to put done and here how many requests that i want to do basically per second so i'm gonna say one and i'm gonna say maximum of three and the loop comes basically will allow me to check how many how many times i want to actually execute this so i'm gonna say three times and i'm gonna say same for each user. so this is gonna be my load test configuration the main configuration settings next i'm gonna go to add again and in, in sampler what i want to do is i want to add a http request so now i'm specifying what type of test i want to execute and we can say this is going to be like a, for example drivers test and here basically we need to specify where is it gonna get or where is it gonna execute this test, the test against so i'm gonna go back to my web browser and here what i want to do is if i go to swagger we can see this is the url that i have so i'm just gonna copy paste it one by one so first of all it's gonna take localhost on port 5000 so here we're gonna say localhost it's gonna be http and the port that's gonna be connecting to is 5000 and then we're gonna we're gonna say it's like a get request and then if I look here, we can see it's connecting to API forward slash drivers. So I'm going to copy this, put it here. And now once we have done this, what I want to do is I'm going to save, just save this. And I'm going to save it under net base. I'm going to save it here, save. And now that I have this, what I want to do is I'm going to come back here. So now that I have configured my API, where is it going to do the testing? Now I want to add some listeners. So I'm going to go back to my load test and right click on add and then underneath add i'm gonna click on listener and the first thing that i want to choose here is basically a summary report and this is what gonna give me a full summary of the full execution that's gonna happen and the next one i'm gonna click add listeners i'm gonna add also the view result tree and this will have the ability to, for me to see all of the different requests that has been also executed so now that i have these two in place from a summary point of view and this is the main test i want to execute now if i click on this green button here we can see now it's going to execute the tests and if i come here we can see that a 30 test has been executed this is the average and this is basically all the different information that i have but if i click on the result view we can see here that I was able to 
see this all of the dust that has happened against my api and basically i can see the different amount of latency that happened i can see the number of requests etc etc and because all of them have the green tick it means that everything has passed successfully so now if i want to verify this i can go back to rider and here we don't have any types of logging but what i can do is i can introduce logging to see that this actually has happened so i can add a logger here so i can put private read only i log for drivers controller we're gonna call it logger and then we're gonna initialize it through the constructor and then inside my get drivers i'm just gonna add the logging mechanism so we're gonna say underscore logger dot log information i'm gonna say request coming in you can put whatever we want but this is very simple so now i'm just gonna apply changes stop this and run it again and i'm gonna go back to my web browser and i'm just gonna execute it we can get the response back go back to rider and let's see here we can see request coming in which means the request is actually executing so now what i want to do is i'm going to go back to jmeter and execute the request again we can see it has completed successfully if i go back to rider we can see all of the requests is actually coming in and the logging are now actually all happening and we know that it's actually executing against our web api okay perfect so now what i want to do is i'm going to go back to jmeter and under load test i'm going to click on add sampler so i'm going to go to get driver test right click add assertion and here what i want to do is i want to add some additional tests that i want to do so it could be for example the amount of time it takes me to get back my response or it could be for example configuration uh, or the, the response type etc etc so here what i want to do is i'm going to choose response assertion and here i'm just going to say response length and under the comments, I don't want to add anything. And as you can see here, you have all of those different configurations that you might actually choose from. So we can say, for example, here, the response code, and I want it to match, for example, equal to, I'm going to add, and I'm going to say it has to equal to 200. And now, for example, once I have this, and now if I run this again, first of all, let's clear all of these reports. So I'm just going to click on all of that to clear everything. And now we can see they are completely empty. And now if I click again, you can see it's executing. And now if I come here, we can see that this is the amount of the execution that happened on the test and we can see here everything has passed because everything we're returning is a 200 so if i come back here to my application and if i change it up again just for demonstration i'm going to change it to bad request and i'm going to change actually let's keep this as is and then we can return something else so i'm going to put here return bad request test test and now let's stop this and run this again if i go right now to my web browser and try to do a get we should get a bad request perfect so now if i run my test we should see that all of this is red and now let's run it and we can see it's all red because it's not matching the 200 that we are expecting so this is one other way that we can actually implement for testing a third way we can come back to duration assertion and here basically would allow us to say how many times is the request should take so if we can say for example i can say the request should take a maximum again it's all an example of three three seconds uh, if it's any more than that it should fail so now for example i have my duration assertion and i'm gonna come back here and i'm gonna just return it back to as it should be i'm gonna stop and run this again okay so now it's running i can go back here click on execute and now we should be able to get the normal response perfect so if i go back to my gmeter clear it up and now run it again and come back to the results we can see i'm getting the results and here we can see that everything is passing because i'm getting the 200 okay and the response time is less than three seconds but what happened if i come back here and add a sleeper so so i'm gonna do this i'm gonna add a delay so i'm gonna put await task dot delay and i'm gonna delay it by three seconds so now if i stop this and run this again now if i come back to jmeter and i'm gonna clear those and i'm gonna run the test again now we can start see that it's executing it's gonna take a bit of time because we can see the amount of too long and now if we open these tests and we can take out the assertion we can see that uh, the duration is more than three seconds that we have already estimated so that's why it's actually failing to execute and through this we can see that we can actually implement a lot of load testing on our web apis and actually understand what's where the bottleneck etc etc where we need to implement caching and so on and so forth so let me just stop this for now and i'm gonna go back to rider i'm gonna stop my application
So this has been a quick introduction about JMeter and how we can utilize it to do some performance testing against our web APIs. This only scratched the surface of what JMeter can do, but this has been a quick overview around it. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. It will really help the channel as well. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.